Oh, there we go. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the April 14, 2022 edition of the Maricopa County Board of Adjustment. Um, I am Chairman, Mr. Loper, Greg Loper. Uh, go ahead and Rosalie, would you please do the roll call? Chairman Loper. Present. Vice Chair Person. Present. Member Schwartz. Member Cardin. Present. And Member Present. Chairman, we have a quorum. Thank you very much. I'm going to proceed with the announcements, but before that, just want to take a second to mention that this is our first in-person meeting in two years. Um, for like member Persone, she had one prior to this that was in person, but the last two years we've been 100% virtual, and we're going to continue with a in person and virtual for the foreseeable future. But I want to take a couple of moments and thank those that are behind the scenes that even I don't, I'm not aware of everything that they do. Uh, first and foremost, want to mention David Anderson and his crew somewhere up there in the ether uh, that runs all the cameras and the website and the microphones and all other stuff behind the scenes. And then also everyone obviously in the planning department, Tom, Darren, everyone, Rachel, especially for working on uh, putting things together virtually. You made it extremely seamless for us as the board members, but I know that it was a, I know it was a headache behind the scenes. But again, thank you everyone for your help and your patience. All right, proceed with the, the announcement, which means I need glasses. Um, this meeting has been noticed in accordance with the open meeting law of ARS 38431. Agendas are available within 24 hours of each meeting in the Maricopa County Planning and Development Office and are also available on the Planning and Development website one week prior to the hearing at www.maricopa.gov slash planning. With respect to the hearing process, cases will be considered in the order they appear on the agenda unless otherwise agreed to by the board. For each case, the applicant will be given a set amount of time to present their testimony. Any witness wishing to give testimony on a particular case shall notify the board of such interest. This shall be done by filling out a speaker's card, similar to this, for each person that wishes to speak that's in attendance, or registering desire to comment as noted on the published agenda. Also at the appropriate time for each case, the chair will ask those attending in person and online who wish to speak to a case to raise their hand by clicking on that icon on the webinar screen or literally raising your hand. Staff will provide the chair with the names of persons who have registered and noted a desire to comment and those registered participants who have raised their hand. Next set of announcements. The chair will call on each named participant one at a time. Such testimony shall be limited to a maximum of three minutes. However, the actual time allowed for testimony shall be at the discretion of the board chair. The chair will conduct the hybrid in-person and virtual public hearing according to the bylaws and according to the rules established by the chair regarding public comment. Votes will be done by roll call vote only and the chair will verbally identify the specific board member responsible for the motion and for the second. All right, proceeding on to the minutes, we have in front of us the minutes of March 17th, 2022. Any comments or um, changes or anything else for any of the board members? Seeing none, those are considered to be approved. Uh, move on to staff announcements. Mr. Gerard. Mr. Chairman, uh Agenda item one, VA 2022-007, known as the Hood property, needs to be pulled from consent for discussion. We've received one letter of opposition. It's a handout before you today. Thank you. So that'll be on the regular agenda. So we're going to move on to the consent agenda. We have two items. Item number two, which is VA 2022-008, the Ticknor property. And agenda item number three, VA 2022-010, the Wedra property, and I'll turn it over to staff. Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board, again, BA 2022-008, the Ticknor property in District 1. These are variances to the east rear setback and maximum lot coverage for an R16 REPD zone property at 26409 South Lake Mountain Drive 
There's no known opposition. The findings in paragraph one are that it meets the statutory test and uh, staff has suggested conditions A through B should you move for approval. And then finally, BA 2022-010, known as the Wedra property in District 3, a variance for hillside disturbance outside the lost principal building envelope for a rural 43 zone property at 223 East Painter Wagon Trail. There's no known opposition. And in paragraph 16, there are findings that the variance meets the statutory test for approval. And should you move, staff has suggested condition A. I'm glad to try and answer any questions you may have. Any questions of staff on any of the consent items? All right, seeing none, is there anyone that wishes to speak on these? Anyone registered or in the audience? Not seeing anyone in the audience. We don't have any speaker cards. Anyone online? We're not aware of anyone, Chairman Lopez. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. All right, then I would entertain a motion for approval of the consent agenda as presented. Um, Chairman Loper, I move that we approve case BA 2022-008 and case BA 2022-010, subject to the stipulations outlined by staff. We have a motion for approval by Vice Chair Person for the uh, uh, consent agenda as presented. Is there a second? Yes, I second. We have a second by Member Cardin. Uh, Rosalie, would you please take a roll call vote? Member Cardin. Yes. Member Ward? Yes. Vice Chairperson? Yes. Chairman Loper? Yes. Chairman, we have an approval of the consent agenda by a vote of four to zero. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll move on to the regular agenda, which happens, the first item is item number one, BA 2022-0007, the Hood property. Turn it over to staff for a presentation. Thank you, Chairman. Adam Cannon. Uh, case BA 2022-007 is for the Hood property in Supervisor District 2. Next slide, please. The site is located at 1726 North 106 Way in the Mesa area in the R135 Zoning District and is approximately 0.86 acres. Next slide, please. The request for variance includes the following. Uh, minimum street side setback uh, which would be the east property line of 10 feet where 20 feet is the minimum permitted for MCZO article 601.4.1.C. The quest would accomplish uh, the following. It would allow an RV garage to be erected. As you uh, are aware, staff received a late opposition letter from a neighboring property owner concerned with the visibility on 106 way and the location of the regulatory front yard as noted uh, in the handout prepared before the board. Staff notes uh, that the front yard is the north property line because the front setback follows the shortest line of access on a property and that thereby renders 106 way as a street side yard. Staff also notes that there's already a permitted six foot wall present on the site of the edge of the access easement. The variance request for a 10 foot street side yard accommodates the previously permitted wall and the proposed RV garage. In our findings, uh, staff finds that it meets the statutory requirements for variance as the applicants demonstrated that there are peculiar conditions facing the property in that two access easements run parallel to and within the northern and eastern property boundary lines. Additionally, a wash runs to the middle of the property. The applicants also demonstrated uh, that the property has peculiar conditions. Uh, due to these peculiar conditions, an undue physical hardship exists preventing the development of the property and that the access easements and wash provide little room for accessory structures on developable land. The applicants unable to apply a one foot BNAE along the Eastern property boundary that would allow for the garage to be built in other such circumstances. And lastly, the location of the leach field on the Western portion of the lot further prevents development. The applicants also demonstrated the peculiar condition or physical hardship is not self-created uh, in the line of title and the wash and easements present prior to ownership of the property and are unable to be removed or relocated. And lastly, the applicants demonstrated that the general intent and purpose of the zoning ordinance will be preserved despite the variance because the variance pertains to allowing a structure that is common in residential areas and will not impact the residential char character excuse me, of the area. And with that, uh, open to questions. Thank you, Mr. Cannon, great presentation. 
Are there any questions of staff at this time? Member Persson. Um, hi, Adam. I have one question about the um, vehicular non-access easement. Will you just restate what you said about that? I missed. I sure. Uh, they are unable to apply a one-foot VNAE along the eastern property boundary that would allow for the garage to be built. And the reason for that is on the site plan, uh, on that eastern property boundary line, 106th way, the easement runs through the other easement to the north. So if they applied the one foot VNAE along that line, uh, the it would restrict access to the easement that provides the frontage for their property. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions of staff at this time? All right, seeing none, I'll go ahead and uh, ask if the applicant is present or wishes to speak. It's Mr. Hood. I do have a speaker request card as well. We'll get to next. Go ahead, step to the podium and provide your name, please, for the record, and go ahead with your presentation. Thank you. My name is Benjamin Hott for Red Rock Contractors, acting as representative for the Hood family. Um, <clears throat> and uh, appreciate the presentation given by Mr. Cannon, and it was very well said. I think it addressed our issue. Uh, we would like to apply for a, a, uh, a re reduction of the 20 foot side setback to 10 foot. If you go to the next slide. That change there, can you go back the slide? There you go. Thank you. So I just, I just wanted to illustrate that um, that 106 is currently a, a private drive. It's not a through street, um, and it's it butts up to Usury Mountain, um, so it, it has limited traffic currently and uh, is is more of a private use. If you could go to the next slide, please. We do have some impact to an existing wash where we're trying to develop this RV garage and we want to minimize that. This uh, reduction of the easement or the setback will allow us to, to minimize impact to the wash and still build the RV garage. Um, and we do have a septic system on the opposite side, which prevents us from locating on the, the west side of the property. If you could please go to the next slide. Um, there was one letter of opposition uh, to this, and it was from the neighbor to the south, uh, which addressed concerns about um, visual impact to traffic. So we wanted to illustrate here that uh, there is a six-foot fence along that, that property, um, which already has some impact. The, the new building will have zero impact beyond this. Um, it, and that is, he is at the end of a um, a dead end street, so there's minimal traffic as it is. Um, can you go to the next slide, please? Uh, that's all I have for today. Appreciate your time. If you have any questions, thank you very much. Uh, any questions of the applicant by any of the board members? All right, seeing none, thank you. Hang tight, might have more questions for you later. Go ahead and open the public hearing. I do have a speaker request card for Benjamin Hot. Oh, sorry, public education and all. Um, I don't have any other speaker request cards. Is there anyone online that wishes to speak? We're not aware of any speakers online. All right, thank you, Mr. Anderson. Um, go ahead then and close the public hearing and turn it back to the board for discussion and or uh, motion. I do have a question. Do I need to note as part of the public hearing the opposition or that was already done by staff? Good, okay. Yeah, that was already done by staff. All right, any discussion or motion? Craig, go ahead. Chairman Uh Thank you. I would move that we approve BA 2022-007, subject to, to the conditions enumerated by staff. We have a motion for approval by Member Cardin. Is there a second? 
second. second. We have a second by member Persone. Rosalie, would you please conduct roll call? Member Cardin. Yes. Member Ward. Yes. Vice Chair Persone. Yes. Chairman Loper. Yes. Chairman, that's an approval by a vote of four to zero. Congratulations. All right, we'll move on to the other item on the agenda, item number four, which is BA 2021-056, and turn that over to staff for a presentation. Mr. Miller. Thank you, Chairman and members of the board. Case BA 2021-056 is for the Eloisio property in Supervisor District 3, which was continued from the February 17th hearing. Next slide, please. The site is located at 515 East Blue Eagle Lane in the Phoenix area in the R135 RUPD zoning district and is approximately half an acre. The request includes the following. Proposed rear self setback of five feet where 40 feet is the minimum permitted per MPZO article 601.4.3 and Z85-225 and proposed side east setback of five feet where 20 feet is the minimum permitted per MCZO article 601.4.3 and Z85.225. Next slide, please. The request would allow the applicant to seek a permit for a 1,200 square foot accessory structure in the southeastern corner of the lot. The applicant has sought the variance prior to submitting for a building permit and has not yet submitted for a building permit for the structure. The applicant has failed to demonstrate that there is a peculiar condition facing the property because the lot is within a recorded and platted subdivision and the restrictions facing the parcel are from, an approved, from the approved RUPD standards as the result of Z85 dash 225. The parcel does contain drainage easements that are a part of and were recorded with the plat. The applicant has not demonstrated applying the requirements of the MCZO to this property that has these particular conditions and undue physical hardship exists because all of the parcels within the Desert Hills Estates subdivision face similar conditions and no other parcel has been granted such a variance. The applicant has failed to demonstrate that the peculiar condition, physical hardship is not self-created in line of title because the RUPD and platted drainage easements existed prior to the applicant's purchase of the parcel. At the February 17th BOA hearing, the cases continue to allow the applicant to assess possible alternatives to the proposed accessory structure location, such as relocating, relocating on the parcel or using a smaller structure. After conversations with the staff, the applicant stated the desire to keep the request unchanged. If the board finds the applicant has proven entitlement to the variance, then the board must state on the record the basis for determination with the findings and conclusion in the motion to grant the release. In such event, staff would offer the board the following conditions of approval. Variance approval establishes a five foot south setback line for a 1,200 square foot accessory structure for APN 211-23196. Variance approval establishes a five foot east setback line for a 1,200 square foot accessory structure for APN 211-23196. One nine six. At this time, I would be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Mr. Mueller. Great presentation. I do have a question, and maybe others do as well. Um, refresh my memory. It's because the RUPD said that all structures had to meet these setbacks that the variance is at, at, at question. If this were just R135 or Rural 43 or whatever the zone is, then the accessory requirements would stand, which allow a accessory structure such as this within three feet of side and rear property lines. So it's the RUPD. The chairman, that is correct. That is the RUPD that is 
presenting the location as presented. Great, uh, thank you. That's all the questions I have. Any other board members have any questions? Mr. Cardin. Chairman Loper, thank you. Uh, just to confirm, I, I assume the answer to this is yes, but uh, the uh, applicant could not build in the drainage easement. Is that correct? Member Cardin, that is correct. Thank you. Nope, I see our county attorney shaking his head. As long as, as, long as what he's going to do does not interfere with the drainage, there's no restriction on it. Now, the problem is somebody has to get in to work on the drainage easement. They could knock down the building and just have to rebuild it. So unless it's part of a no build for some other reason than the drainage easement, you can build on it. I, you know, I don't know if there was a flat note or something that said you can't build in the easement, but just as a Okay. And then we don't, we aren't aware if the drainage easement contained language for no build. Mr. Chairman, uh, the RUPD uh, did restrict. Uh, Okay. In that area and, and as well as the reply notes. Okay. You catch that, Mr. Cardin? Yes, thank you. Any other questions by any board members of uh, staff at this time? Well, Member Ward? Can you please tell me how far away um, number 66, lot 66 is from this lot? distance or I didn't quite catch that did, did you Mr. Miller Darren do you <laughs> know how far me. away lot 66 is from this lot this is lot 42 yeah apparently lot 66 there's an additional note on here that lot 66 was also built outside of the specific subdivision setbacks and I'm just curious the distance between the lots and how much it really pertains to the situation. Mr. Chairman, uh, this uh, member Ward, this is Darren. Uh, there have been no variances granted. Uh, I'm aware, I believe, I, I believe there is a legal non-conforming condition on an existing lot. Uh, but that is not uh, that is not shown in the in the background on this report, so I, I I don't have any more detail available at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Any other board members have any questions? All right. Um, I do have a speaker card. It's from the applicant, Joseph Aloisio. Am I saying that correctly? Oh. Do you wish to speak? Come on up to the podium, please, and provide your name for the uh, record. Hello, and thank everyone for their time today. Uh, I'm Joseph Aloisio, the applicant uh, for the property. Um, so the first variance we came and we were requesting for the building setback, as just discussed by Joseph, um, I kind of went back and looked at the two options that we have besides where we want to put it in the southeast corner, uh, and I'll go through that. First, I just wanted to go over some of the easement, wash easement facts that we have. So next slide, please. Um, I think it's a pe peculiar condition just because it covers, it's the yellow shaded area on our property. It covers most of the west side of our land. Um, and really it's unusable land as far as we're concerned just because of the flood potential too. So I never would want to build in a wash easement because one time a year, I think we've had it, we've been there about four years now. When it does rain, the water flows pretty good and overflows in that area. So I feel if I were to build the building in that west side, the flood potential of it would be pretty high. Um, next slide, please. Um, also, from where it comes into the street in the front, you can see the, the little wash. Um, pretty much there's no way if I were to build in that back west corner to drive through the wash right now because really it, right beside my trash can there it passes about seven feet from my garage as it is so we'd have to really 
relocate, redig, and push it all the way next to the neighbor's yard on the west side of the property. And then the easement actually goes into his too. So to me, you're moving the wash and then possibly creating more water to go really into his property as it is. Um, next slide, please. Um, one, I kind of talked to a, um, an engineer about it. He says it's gonna be really expensive to move the wash, number one. Um, also, we were talking about the flooding potential of the neighbor's yard. Um, also, there's a lot of mature trees through that wash too. And in my opinion, just pulling out all the shrubs, vegetation and all that to put a building kind of takes away from the whole neighborhood itself just to have trees and stuff like that. Um, and then also, if you have a building here and the wash passes within three, four feet of it, like it'll have to, to me, it's just going to erode next to that building. And really just building in the wash to me just doesn't make, uh, you know, all, to spend that much money on that. Next slide, please. Um, option two would be to put it pretty much in the setbacks right in the middle of my backyard. And you can see off our back patio, I have a big a little fence for our beagle. Um, but one, if we were to walk out the back patio and have a, a metal building right in the middle of our backyard, to me, it would significantly decrease the resale value of the property. Also, to make the turn, once I come through the RV gate, to turn a 40-foot camper 90 degrees into a building to me would be really hard in itself. Um, and then obviously just, it's pretty much right in the middle of your backyard, blocks your view. Um, next slide. Um, option three would be to me, little to no impact on the property drainage. So we're not touching the wash on the west side. The back corner where we want to put it is pretty much untouched left. I think there's two small bushes in that corner. Um, the wash easement's left alone. It's going to increase the property value. Um, in my opinion, because anyone that wants an RV garage, obviously, you know, having a nice padded metal structure like that, the RV gates already on the east side of the property. And there's already the driveway, which comes from the street. You can see my RV back there right now, all the way to the back. Um, next slide. Um, like we talked about earlier, the proposed building side, I made a little blue structure right where it'd be over my RV. Um, I also have full neighbor support behind me and to both sides. They're all for it. Um, but I think one of the letters said she'd rather look at the building than my RV back there. <laughs> um, it's the least amount of property modification as far as the gate, the driveway. Um, and also it's gonna be located inside of our already fenced in backyard, which is that brown uh, pole rail fence that goes all the way to the backside. So we're not going outside of the fence property already. And to me, it's just the most logical location. Um, next slide. Um, thank you for, con for your consideration. Um, I can answer any questions. Thank you very much. Are there any questions of the applicant at this time from board members? Member Persson. Um, I just want to say thank you for explaining this option. That's what I was hoping to understand yes. um, when we had the last discussion about your request. Thank you. I see Member Cardin has his hand up. Go ahead. Yes, thank you, Chairman Loper. I uh, first want to just mention to Mr. Aloisio that uh, uh, thank you for that presentation. It was very good. I'm, I'm even impressed that uh, you addressed part of the uh, of the test that we have to go through, and which is rare among a homeowner presentation. So thank you. Uh, I uh, seeing that there's neighbor support. Well, first of all, I, I believe. Uh, there is a good uh, peculiar uh, condition there uh, that he addressed well. I also see he's got good neighbor support. I guess uh, my only comment is, uh, did you understand or receive any any opposition that you saw as you addressed as you as you talked to your neighbors about this? Um, I did not. Um, I kind of went around to even some of the other neighbors that have buildings that are within their setback. And it's there's other buildings in the neighborhood already. And I always go to him like, man, I love your building. And I was showing him my land. He says, oh, that wash is gonna hurt you from, from you know, prevent you from building on the big side, the west side there. Um, and then I heard about the setback and that's why I figured I had to file variance to, you know, at least try to get a building put there and really as expensive as the building is, 
I don't see me spending that much money to have it on the wash side and then to decrease the value. So it's kind of like the only spot I think that it would make sense to do it. Um, but no, I really didn't get any opposition. Everyone that lives up in Desert Hills where we are has RVs, has building, and really everyone wants pretty much what we're trying to build here. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions of the applicant? All right, hang tight. We may have some others. Let me go ahead and open the public hearing. And again, the only speaker request card I have is from the applicant who just spoke. Um, do we have anybody registered online or anybody in the audience who wishes to speak? Chairman Loper, there are no, uh, there's no one who wishes to comment online. All right, go ahead then and close the public hearing. Open this up for uh, discussion and possible motion. This is in District 3, which I believe is Member Schwartz District. He's not in attendance, so, oh, it's yours. Okay, my apologies. Um, thank you. I, I'll start off. I, uh, you know, I have a hard time approving things when I don't think we can meet a statutory test, and that's where I was going when we had our last discussion about this. Um, but after hearing more from the applicant, um, I'm, you know, I, I do feel that the drainage and the kind of domino effect of the drainage outside the wash, I can get comfortable with that being a peculiar condition. And so uh, I'm in support and would be, you know, willing to make a motion that we approve case VA 2021-056 subject to the stipulations that staff has outlined. We have a motion for approval by member Persone. Is there a second? Second. We have a second by member Cardin. Uh, Rosalie, would you please take a roll call vote? Member Cardin? Yes. Member Ward? Yes, and I would like to add the selling point was the blue outline of the view. <laughs> Thank you. Vice Chair Persson? Yes. Chairman Loper? Yes. Chairman, that's an approval by a vote of four to zero. Thank you and congratulations. All right, we'll move on to other matters. Um, staff, is there anything for us? No, sir. Any board member have anything for staff? Mm -mm. We'll go ahead and adjourn. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.